Another day, uh, another drug scandal. Why not? Good afternoon, Evan. How are you today, Ken? I'm excellent. Thank you so much for asking. Oh, listen to Evan. My team finally got a W, but I don't want to acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> you were at the game, too, so good for you. I'm happy. I'm oh, just good to see a win when you're there. Why the hell you not? know what? It has a little bit to do with that, but it just has to do with I'm in a good mood today. I'm good. still juicing. I feel healthy. I'm looking at your smiling face. You got to be careful using the term juicing, especially <laughs> today. That's true. Uh, with the uh, Matt Harvey uh, situation today. Yeah. Which to me, yeah, it's yeah, a big yeah. story because for a lot of reasons. Listen, someone died, right? Uh, and there's drug use involved. But it's also an interesting legacy conversation about Matt Harvey, who saw the best of times and the worst of times as the New York Met. Uh, and I think the fan base thinks of him both ways at the same time. Obviously, the great run in 15. You know, they not want to come off the mound, the ballsy stuff. You know, the promise of 12 and 13, the Tommy Johnson, all the stuff. Like, we, don't have to rel- we don't have to go over it again. We know the Matt Harvey story, but now we know more. Yes. And it reminds me, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a trial going on in, in, regarding the death of Angels pitcher Tyler Skaggs. And a guy that worked for the Angels at the time, uh, last name, what's his first name? Eric uh, K. I think. Eric K., thank you. Uh, was accused of being his drug dealer. And one of the uh, drugs that uh, Skaggs unfortunately took was laced with fentanyl, and it killed him. Uh, and then it turns out that Matt Harvey's name came up in it in that he was an alleged drug supplier to Tyler Skaggs. Now, the issue was he may have given him Percocet. He didn't give him Oxy. The Oxy was what was laced with fentanyl. You know, what level, if any, culpability does former Matt Matt Harvey have. So the prosecutor in the case offered Matt Harvey full immunity. And in getting immunity, he has to tell the truth about everything. Mm -hmm. And Matt Harvey told the truth. And it's uh, rumors that have haunted him even back during his heyday with the Mets where people used to say things that kind of under the surface little rumors and innuendo about Matt partying too much. You all remember well, when he missed the, the famous workout yep, 15. Uh, at City Field in 2015 in a before playoff game, right? And there were always those rumors that Matt was in the club too much. Matt was partying too much. But how do you define partying? Is it just you know a young guy in his 20s with a lot of money drinking? Nothing wrong with that. But is it worse than that? And he admitted that it was. Matt Harvey in uh, deposition today... Or I guess what late yesterday, whatever it was. Today. It was it this morning. I was watching the live tweeting of yeah. it. Yeah. Matt like Harvey Quinn. with full immunity admitted under oath that he used to do a lot of cocaine. He liked to party with cocaine. Yeah, he, he also said. talked about Percocets. He did acknowledge that he gave Tyler Skaggs a bunch of Percocets. And this guy, Eric Kay, not only gave Skaggs this laced oxycodone, but apparently gave a pill, a blue pill. To Matt Harvey as well. And when Skaggs passed away from this you know, uh, terrible, uh, sad, you know, tragic story from the fentanyl, Matt Harvey got spooked and had not done his pill yet or taken his pill or crushed it up and snorted it or whatever they, these guys do it and threw it out scared to death that you know he was a pill away from dying. But now Matt Harvey is at the center of a drug scandal, of an embarrassing drug scandal for Major League Baseball. And his rationale was, I did whatever I had to do to keep playing. And as a good teammate, when a guy came to me and said, hey, you know, I need some Percocets uh, to keep playing, I did what I could. I thought I was being a good teammate. And for the rest of us, that kind of falls short, right? Because we're not baseball players. We don't know what goes on in the locker room. But you'd like to think that we would do it for one another because that's being a good friend, a good coworker. And I'm not knocking that part of it. I get that part of it. But I'm trying to think now. You're a diehard Met fan, maybe the biggest Met fan I know. And I know you don't wax poetic about Harvey because you don't like the fact that back in the day there was the thought that Harvey was better than DeGrom, <laughs> which you've always had a problem with. But take that out of it. Yeah, no, Does no. Does Harvey I... admitting now that he has partied with cocaine throughout his career do anything at all to change well, your view the, of him? The, the view I always had about Matt Harvey... Similar, not exactly the same, but had some similarities to Doc in that we never got to see what we fully expected from him. You know, when Matt Harvey burst onto the scene and dominated 
really in 2014 when he started that all 2013 when he started that All Star game and then eventually needed Tommy and John. And struck out the side, right? He was unbelievable. He also drilled Robinson Cano, and that ticked a lot of people off. But then Harvey gets hit with Tommy John. And there's that uncertainty of what will he ever be. And he comes back in 15, and he's almost as good. He's almost as dominant. And he's very good in the postseason. And we all know, like you mentioned, wanting to stay in that game, game five of the World Series, even though clearly Terry Collins should have taken him out. And after that, he was never the same. And I think we assumed he was never the same because of injuries. And maybe that is a big part of why he was never the same. So I think what we found out today is because he liked to party with cocaine, it starts to now lead to the question of, well, maybe his dominance also stopped because of his partying, because of the other usage, kind of similar things that affected Doc. So I just didn't know. I didn't know that it was a secret. What, I, that I, he was using cocaine? Yeah, I didn't I know always, he was using cocaine. I always thought everybody just always knew that. Well, 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 hold on. How did you yeah. think everyone knew that? Now, we heard rumors know. about that, but that doesn't mean it was true. So I guess. And like you said, there were rumors Matt Harvey liked to party. Yeah, but there's a big I mean, difference. That's how I define it. But all right. Well, no, no. I, is I, that I, how we all define it? I don't know. Partying could be a innocent thing. It could be yes. I stay out. I drink. I'm with a lot of different women, but I'm not doing anything illegal. Yeah. I'm always there, ready to go. I'm always practicing. I'm always in the best physical shape. And I think you start to look back at Harvey's legacy with the Mets and wonder what if. Even louder than you did a now, year ago. I'll say this. The thoracic outlet syndrome's got nothing to do with cocaine. Uh, Tommy John surgery's got nothing to do with cocaine. Right, right, right. Yeah, on the surface. But knowing what we know about cocaine, yo, know, how do I know if Matt Carvey wasn't doing lines of coke before a start? Well, I'll, I'll bring something up specific to you. So there right? were two starts in mind. And I remember what had happened. We all thought it was badass and thought it was cool. And you can YouTube it and look it up because I'm not sure you remember. There were two starts where Matt Harvey, all of a sudden, in the middle of the start, had a bloody nose. And we were like, oh, look at this badass. Look at this badass. Bloody nose. I think one of the games was against the White Sox. Okay. And one of the games was against the Dodgers. I'm sure the guys can look it up. See if you can find it. That's fine. And I remember it as a Met fan, and all of our reactions were, we weren't spreading any rumors. We're like, look how tough he is. Look how intense he is. He's so freaking intense that he's got a nosebleed. It doesn't even bother him, and he's pitching through it. Well, now... Looking back at things, you start to think differently about that, no? Yeah, it's the whole thing is weird to me. I, I'm in a weird spot on this one. So, all right, years ago, I, I don't, I honestly don't remember if it was 2013 or 14. I don't remember. Well, 14, it. he didn't pitch. Four, yeah, but 14 the year he got in the fight at the Gilded Lily. Um, if you remember, if there's that like a, a club brawl, right? And he was at the heart of it. And there's a whole issue of did he just walk away or did he initiate the fight? You know, what did the guy say to him? So he was out partying. He was at One Oak a lot, you know, uh, socializing, you know, with you know, models. We all know, you know, his affinity for models. He dated a number of them. You saw him at Nick Games with him at Ranger Games. He enjoyed every aspect of the New York nightlife. So there was a – I got a uh, – a woman reached out to me back then – uh, and sent me videos to prove that she was legit. And I don't want to get into all the specifics of the videos, but was basically looking to blackmail Matt right. uh, and tell the world that Matt Harvey liked to do a lot of cocaine. And I remember I was putting a weird spot on it because she legitimately was in his apartment. That much I could, uh, I could uh, certainly verify because of the videos that she sent me. And she was looking for like $100,000. She was looking to blackmail him. Because she was going to reveal that now. This is pre all the stuff that happened after 15. Right, right. And him leaving the Mets and all the crap. He was a rock star th- sure. in this town. No doubt. He was one of the biggest stars. And was treated accordingly. Yep. And this girl wanted to take him down and wanted a payday to do it. All right? And the whole thing went away. I don't know if he wrote a check or not. But uh, I remember talking to Matt and telling him that there's a woman coming after and you. And what he said. And uh, he put it off to the, his representation. And I, it's not like I had five or six conversations with him. I didn't, but I had one or two. When I said, listen, I got video from your apartment. You're in one of the videos. I know it's you. I know your apartment. And this woman's looking to blackmail you. So for some reason, I guess all these years later, I never, because why would I think about Matt Harvey in the middle of like, you know, uh, a week? Uh, I just assumed everyone knew he liked to party, definition we Duco. Knew, we knew he liked to party, but I'll I tell you this, and maybe I wasn't looking for it. I'm not an investigative reporter. I didn't know he was doing cocaine. 
Like, that's not something yeah. that was full common like, knowledge. I remember him being blackmailed about using cocaine. Wow. So, whatever. It comes full circle now in that he admits he used cocaine. Right. So, that's no longer secret. It's no longer out there. The games that you're referencing, thank you, Tom, May 7th, 2013, bloody nose to start a game against the White Sox. July 4th, 2015, nosebleed on the mound against the Dodgers. Yeah, it happened twice. Doesn't mean he didn't have a nosebleed. No, no. no. But now that you know he's doing a bunch yes. of cocaine, yes. cocaine does lead for some when, people to random nosebleeds. When you ask, hey, as a Met fan, what does this news about Matt Harvey lead you to think differently about his legacy or about him or the what could have been? There are a lot of thoughts, yeah. and one of those thoughts is I thought back, because there are certain Matt Harvey memories I have. The Harvey's better game is one of my favorites against the Nationals, against Steven Strasburg, where the entire crowd was chanting, Harvey's better. Yeah. It was epic. Sure. And then I think of, yeah, there were numerous times in which he had a bloody nose, and we all thought it was badass. Yes. Because we were naive. He's pinching in- through the blood. He's like Kurt Schilling's yes. stupid sock. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And he was our badass. He was our, our black knight. Sure, sure. Dark knight, excuse me. Sure. He was the guy. Yeah. He was the guy. And now, you know, you look back on Matt Harvey... And beyond it just being sad. It's sad. And him now being involved, you know, in drug use with a teammate that lost his life. Like, the New York legacy shot. Well, it's the what could have been. It ain't Doc. It ain't Strawberry. It's the what could have. See, I, I don't know if I fully agree with that for this reason. Even though they didn't win the World Series in 2015, nobody, including me, and I was anti letting him pitch the ninth inning, Nobody blames Matt Harvey. No, and I think true, a lot true, of true. us view Matt Harvey as leaving it all out there in Game 5 against Kansas City. And if Matt Harvey returned for old-timers day, not this year, but 10 years from now, yeah. he would get, I'm looking you straight in the eye because I mean standing this, ovation. a standing yeah. ovation. So it's not true that his legacy is you shot. So? There's a what-if to him. There's a huge what-if to him. And the what if's even greater today yeah. than it was a month ago. Well, there's the disappointment because you saw how good he was. Yes. Yeah, yes. we saw a guy who was the best thing we'd seen it's, in a long time. Craig, it's not on the level of Doc, but there is the what if Doc could have been and should have been a Hall of Famer. There's a yeah. lot of Met fans who feel that way. He was still great. They still won a World Series. Saw Young, Rookie of the Year. He still accomplished a lot. Doc couldn't walk into City Field, dude. Every ass is off their seat, and they're giving the man a standing so, ovation. My man and my main man, Sam and Trenton, who's my dog, just sent me uh, the two photos. Of the bloody nose, so uh, I mean it's uh, I mean apparently it ain't that hard to find. Did you remember that or no? I had no recollection of that okay. at all. Good call. I, I I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah, it looks like he's bleeding out of his left nostril on uh, both times. So there you go. Good job, Sam. I'll I'll retweet that bad boy right now. As a matter of fact. So yeah, it, and again, could it have just been a nosebleed, of course. But now you have a guy, and this is, he's admitting he liked to use cocaine. Now, what do we know about cocaine, right? If you want the extra edge and the adrenaline, and I'm not suggesting anyone should do it, you know, public service announcement, this is a stupid way to conceive things. Mm -hmm. But when you're at that level and you're looking for the edge, we know a lot of guys have done it. I do have one question, and I'm just asking the question. You can tell me it's not a big deal. While he was answering questions today, And I forget if it was the prosecution or the defense on the cross-examination. They said, hey, Matt, did you lie to your team about your cocaine use? Okay. And Matt Harvey said, I never lied. No one ever asked me about my cocaine use. And so let me pivot. If you're telling me, hey, Evan, I thought everybody knew. I did. Really? Yeah. Then how come the New York Mets didn't ask him? Oh, I don't. Could be. Could, well, let's hold on. Is Matt Harvey lying? I gotta say. No, no. That, his answer on the stand, dude. Yeah, and I understand. Where that. he's got full I, immunity and he I, can't lie. I think. He that, said he was never asked about I his cocaine. I think that's possible. So the New York Mets never asked him about his cocaine. I think use? it's possible uh, because of where the c- c- career trajectory he was on. You close your eyes, you turn your head. Really? So in the middle of 2015, when he's no showing a workout or he's thinking of shutting himself down or what have you, no one ever asked him, hey, Matt, is everything okay? Are you on cocaine? Uh, Is it normal to ask that question? Is everything okay? One question. Are you doing blow? Totally different question. But if you're saying, and I trust you. Let's ask Sandy Olsen. I'd say they never asked him. But Matt Harvey's saying nobody asked him. Yeah, I agree with him. And, and I'm, really, yeah. that's it. If you're telling me and I believe you, yeah. hey, Evan, I thought everybody knew. I did. 
But, but, but the Mets but, didn't? Hang on. But listen, I think the team always knows what guys are doing, whether they think uh, the, whether the guys think they know or not. I think there's certain behavioral patterns, you know, that a lot of times they know, can you keep a secret? Yes, you can. I did with gambling for a long time. I don't know that you can do that with drugs. The bloody nose doesn't help his story at all. I think for me, the reason I just assumed everybody knew is because I had this real unique experience in that I got video from a random woman he's sleeping with trying to blackmail him for using cocaine. Right. So maybe all these years later, I just processed that looking back now going, who didn't know? Gotcha, gotcha. So gotcha. I, that, and again, I've never said that on the air before. No. I didn't no. during the morning show. And obviously you don't talk about Matt Harvey anymore. But yeah. A woman tried to blackmail him for using cocaine during the season. I don't know. That's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, that's nuts when you think about it. Yes, it was crazy. <laughs> it still is. Yeah. All these years later, hearing that story, it's nuts. It's nuts. That's right. Wow. That's right. Yeah, so uh, 2013, 2015, bloody nose. Do we know for a fact it's cocaine? No. Do we all now assume it is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's like when Roger Clemens threw the bat at Mike Piazza, years later, most of us said, oh, it was roid rage. It was out of his mind. He sure. was juiced up, and he had roid rage. So it it changes how you view past events when you have more information in the future. Yeah. So, listen, we'll get to, we'll get into it with you. It's sad because there's a dead guy uh, because he uh, took fentanyl. I assume he didn't know he took fentanyl, and Harvey did acknowledge that he gave uh, Tyler Skaggs, I guess, six or seven Percocets. Apparently, the way guys use it when you have a drug problem he, is they crush it up and snort it. He also claimed, and I'm not, I don't know if this is going to go anywhere. I don't know if we're going to get a name, but he claims he got the Percocet from a hockey player. I didn't see that part. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sure they asked, didn't they? No. They didn't? Not based because on. The, maybe because <laughs> the Percocet's not what killed Tyler Right, 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 right. It was the fentanyl that was uh, somehow mixed in to the oxycodone that he was taking. And they have already, and to be fair, Matt Harvey's not accused of supplying Skaggs with the drug that killed him. He's accused of giving him Percocets. Right. He acknowledges and he, he did. confirms that. Yeah, he, he goes, said yeah. he did. He, he asked he, for them. I gave it to him. And he claims he got and tried oxycodone from Skaggs. Skaggs gave it to him. He tried it and quote didn't like it and never did it again. Apparently. Uh, someone's sending me a note here. Hey guys, see if you can um, grab this. Um, mm, 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 mm. July, yeah, so July 4th was the Bloody Nose game, but there's a note that, hang on a second, so there was, there were stories, I'm just looking at Google right now, Evan, Yeah, there were stories back then, people questioning the bl Bloody Nose and cocaine. The game against the Dodgers? Where yeah. Where people were saying, why do you have a bloody nose, maybe he's yeah. on cocaine? Uh, does Matt Harvey do cocaine? Yeah, but where That's was the that? Headline. Where was that being discussed? Was that in the local newspapers? Um... It was a blog. Okay, well. Before I, blogs were really that popular. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but there's apparently... Hold on. All right. Can you guys check? How do I get this? Most of Mets Twitter was naive. No, we were like, badass Matt Harvey. Bloody yeah. nose. Doesn't matter. Uh, so there's a YouTube video uh, in which I guess Gary Cohen's talking about maybe the game starting late because Harvey had a nosebleed. Really? I don't and, recall that. All right, we got to get to that. All right, so let, let's take a quick break. We'll get all your calls, 877-337-6666. May 17th, 2013. That was the White Sox game. Matt Harvey begins his start against the White Sox with a bloody nose and continues to pitch without delay as if he's unaware that his nose is bleeding. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. All right, we'll get all your calls. We have more Super Bowl stuff to get to because now the pity party has begun for the Cincinnati Bengals.